This is George from iTech Legion. Obviously, it's the large enthusiast coolers that always get the bulk of the attention. The big dual tower coolers, the AIOs, uh, and CLCs. But really, the largest part of the market that uh, is out there is going to be the mainstream and budget coolers. It's going to fit the majority of consumers' needs. Now, typically, we've seen um, quite a few you know, budget and mainstream coolers out there. Some have made a real lot of noise, like the Cooler Master 212 Evo. But typically, we don't see the major manufacturers really getting into this market. And when I say major manufacturers, I'm talking about the real top-tier cooling manufacturers, such as Noctua, Fantex, Be Quiet, Cryorig. But now, with the demand for it, and with CPUs coming down in TDP, making it more and more possible, we're actually seeing these guys getting into it. So, we're going to take a look at some pieces from Be Quiet, Fantex, and Cryorig that are aimed at just that. They're smaller, quieter, and they are budget friendly. With the incredible amount of attention Fantex has been getting over the last year on their cases, and deservedly so, it's almost easy to forget that Fantex started out as a cooling company and made one of the top coolers on the market, actually the first air cooler ever to surpass the NHD 14, which sat there uh, by itself for years. The 14 PE, obviously. Now, uh, Fantex has come back into the cooling market with two new pieces, the 14S and the 12LS that we see here. Now you might be wondering, why are these two pieces sitting here together, and why would I be putting them in the same review? Well, obviously they're very, very different, made for different uh, applications, but they actually share quite a bit of the same DNA. If you take a look, they actually use the same tower design, same six 6 millimeter heat pipes, with the end caps, as you see, black fins, with the physical antioxidant thermal shielding, which actually repels heat from outside sources, allowing the heat pipes to dissipate the heat from the cooler itself, or I should say, uh, from the CPU itself, without taking on heat from outside sources. As we've seen in the past, it actually works very well. So essentially what you've got here is exactly the same design, just in a slightly different shape, and with the 14S using a dual fin array, whereas the 12LS uses a single fin array in a C-type configuration, so it stands only 74 millimeters tall. Both use the same copper block, as you see here, milled to a very nice finish. Not a mirror finish, but almost a mirror finish. Uh, almost no mill marks whatsoever. Fantex always does a beautiful job on their coolers, uh, and as we've seen performance-wise, they absolutely respond. Now. Obviously, the need for the 12LS, very simple, 70, like I say, 75 millimeters tall and C-shaped, so obviously it's going to go into a small form factor computer. Now, the 14S obviously is a little bit different. Let's take a look at the 14S first. Now, first off, taking a look at it, it looks like a 12DX that's been turned inside out. Rather than having two fans around, one thicker, um, fin array, it's got one fan in the center, two slimmer fin arrays. Now, Fantex claims that they're going to be bringing 14PE type performance into a slimmer design. Now, the reason for the slim design, obviously, is for RAM compatibility. So you've got zero RAM compatibility. You've got a really nice looking cooler that's going to be sitting there in the case. Black and white design, as you see here. Really good looking um, with zero RAM compatibility issues. Going to use both um, use Fantex Solo SKU mounting kit, fabulous mounting kit, very easy to work with, and very, very solid. Let's take a quick look at a couple of the specs on the 14S. Uh, first off, it uses the 140 HP fan, which uh, won a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award recently. Great fan, 140 millimeter fan, capable of uh, 68 CFM. And also, it's a little bit high on the static pressure side, 1.63 millimeters. So you get a great fan included here. Actually, uh, this is what the 14 PE fan was upgraded to and uh, made really a nice difference, couple degree difference on the 14 PE. Uh, so I'm sure it's going to do very, very well here as well. Uh, as far as dimensions, uh, it stands 155 millimeters tall. So you're going to have, or I should say, um, 
Yeah, 155 millimeters tall, sorry. And so you're gonna have good compatibility as far as cases uh, as well. So you've got a really nice looking cooler here, really nice looking design. Now going over to the 12 LS, obviously like I say, 75 millimeters tall for small form factor cases. And this uses the Fantex new MP fan, the tw um, 12 MP. And it's a high static pressure fan capable of 53 CFM, 1.72 millimeters of static pressure at only 25 dB. So you're gonna be getting good airflow without a lot of noise with good static pressure. So once again, Fantex is using top quality components in a smaller form factor, and obviously you're poised to take on the mainstream market and the high compatibility market. Both the 14S and the 12 LS use the solo skew mounting kit. Uh, taking a look. First, Installation manual, very easy to follow along with. The Solo Ski Mounting Kit is very, very easy to use. Very easy installation, really nice to work with. Um, it does uh, come with everything you need for Intel 775, 1150, 55, 56, 1366 in 2011, as well as AM2 and 3 and FM1 2. So, moving on from the manual, get the Intel set, which has Intel backplate, as well as Mounting bars, tube of Fantex thermal interface material with the crossbar and two nuts. Uh, that's pre-installed on the 14S, but on the 12LS, uh, you will have to install that separately. Intel set, as you see with the mounting bolts uh, and standoffs, AMD set, on the AMD, you will use your motherboard's factory backplate. Uh, you will not be using the included backplate. Like I say, factory backplate, very simple install. And finally, the LGA 2011 set. So now that we've looked at the kit, let's see exactly how it works. Both the 14S and the 12LS use the solo skew mounting kit. A uh, really nice kit to work with, very easy. First step, backplate. If you're doing an Intel install, um, you've got three notches in the backplate. 775, 1155, 56, 1150, 1366, choose the correct slot and put the four bolts through, then put the back plate onto the back of the motherboard. And obviously as you can see, four bolts will come through, four spacers will go on the bolts. And mounting brackets will go on that. Uh, very important you notice the mounting brackets themselves also have the three slots uh, for the different sockets. Very important that you have the 775, the narrowest slot, pointed towards the CPU. Now for the 14S, you're going to want to go top and bottom with the mounting brackets. For the 12LS, it's going to go on the sides, so that way you've got the proper orientation. Um, you can mount the 12 LS in any orientation you like. The preferred orientation is with the end of the heat pipes up top. Never mount it upside down. You can mount it sideways if you like, but the preferred orientation is up top. Now on the 12 LS, you do have to remove the fan, four screws before you put it in. You've got the two holes, as you see, in the fins for mounting it. But right now we're gonna mount the 14S and we're gonna go top and bottom. Then just take the caps and tighten them up. Now one of the important things, you don't want to over tighten anything. Everything's got to stop. So when you feel the stop, simply stop tightening. Repeat the same on the bottom. In most cases, you'll be able to hand tighten them and you'll actually feel the stop. Uh, in some cases, you will want to use a screwdriver just for the final tighten up. But like I say, don't over tighten anything. 
very, very important. You know, when you feel the stop, stop turning. As you can see, I've gone ahead and applied the thermal interface material to the CPU. Uh, very important when you're going to seat the tower. Remember to take the plastic off. Um, we've actually had a number of people, you know, write to us, hey, I'm not getting, you know, decent temps, and that was the reason. Now, obviously, you've got the two screw downs right here, which are going to line up with two protruding bolts, and you're going to line them up and screw it down into place. Uh, you'll notice you've got on one tower anti vibration pads, which is where your fan mounts, that's going to go towards the rear of the case, that's your exhaust. So we'll just put this into place. You just want to get the first screw started, line up your second, give that a start as well, then alternate back and forth until you feel the stop. You will feel a distinct stop. And I actually didn't have a start on the first, on the second one. There we go. And you want to go back and forth until you feel the stop. As I say, don't over tighten. When you feel it come to a stop, it is fully tightened. And tower's in place. Just need to clip the fan into place and connect it. We're good to go. Using the solo ski mounting kit, you know, as we've seen before, very, very easy install, very solid install. The 14S looks really interesting in the case. Um, of course, taste is, subje uh, is subjective. Personally, I think it's a good looking cooler, uh, especially with the black end caps. Now, as you can see, as far as RAM clearance, doesn't even come close to the first RAM slot. You've got complete RAM compatibility there. No worries whatsoever. So let's get the 12LS mounted up and take a look at how that looks. And you see the 12LS mounted in the case. A uh, little bit different situation here. Again, nice looking, very clean lines, black and white, minimalist uh, type look. Now, you've got three slots completely unimpeded by the 12LS itself. The first slot, you do get overhang from the fan, not from the tower itself. So you've got about 47 to 48 millimeters back there. So you are going to be able to get RAM back there with a little bit of a heat sink. Um, something along the lines of a G-Skill Sniper. Uh, the Trident with the uh, top heat sink removed. Uh, G-Skill, or I should say, uh, Kingston Fury, etc. You know, the smaller heat sinks. You're not going to get a, you know, uh, stick of vengeance back there or, you know, anything of that nature. But like I say, you've got about 47, 48 millimeters back there is uh, best I can measure. Uh, the other three slots, again, completely unimpeded. So it looks good in the case. Now let's take a look at how they perform. Turning our attention to the cooling performance, first we're going to start with the 14S. As you can see, we've got the 14S going up against the best performing coolers in its, uh, in its price class. And as you see, uh, with stock clocks, holds up very, very well. One of the things I do want to point out here, that 34 dB, while it's only a couple of dB quieter than the Cryo Rig H5, and obviously substantially lower than the uh, 12 DX, the 34 dB, the 14S is a very smooth sounding cooler. The 140 HP fan, has a very nice tone to it. It's not abrasive at all. Never gets any burring, buzzing, anything of that nature. Very, very smooth sounding cooler. So uh, very important to keep in mind. Now, when we turn the heat up here, we're gonna bring the CPU up to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.21 volts. And as you can see, the 14S uh, does fall behind the other coolers here by a couple of degrees, but that's absolutely not a disgrace. Like I say, these are the three best performers in the price class, and the 14S for all intents and purposes keeps up with them. You know, you're talking about, you know, just a couple of degrees off, and it remains nice and quiet and has that full RAM compatibility. So really a great showing here from the 14S. Now, moving over to the 12LS, uh, once again, I want to point out, 75 millimeters tall, $39.95 retail. That's a big deal here. Every other cooler in this uh, comparison is a bit more money and either does stand a bit taller or, you know, just as tall. The, uh, the Thermalab LP53 is um, 
a little bit shorter, only 53 millimeters tall, but it is significantly more expensive. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now you look at this and the uh, 12 LS does a really nice job with stock clocks. As we see, you know, no performance problems there whatsoever. A couple degrees off from, you know, like I say, much more expensive. And in the case of the NT06 Pro, much louder coolers, you know, in its price class. Now, when we did try to overclock, the 12 LS did not hold up very well, so we weren't able to complete an overclock uh, evaluation of 4.4 gigahertz. I'm sure you could bring it up, you know, to 4, uh, 4 gigahertz, 4.2 without a problem, but at 4.4, the voltage needed was just too much for the 12 LS to handle. The 14S and the 12 LS definitely mark a change in direction for Fantex. Um, rather than the brute, you know, strength cooling that we've seen in the past from, you know, pieces like the 14PE and the 12DX, we're seeing a lot more attention here to compatibility, low noise, and really a nicer looking uh, finish on the product. Now, I mean, the Fantex coolers have always been really nice looking coolers, but these really go above and beyond. You've got really nice finish on the end caps, really nice finish on the towers on both of them. Really good looking coolers in the case. Uh, personally, especially the 14S, I thought was fantastic looking in the white and through uh, Lux, you know, through the side window using a black motherboard. It looked great. So, you know, definitely, like I say, a change in direction. Now, was it all uh, hits, no misses? Well, no, but it was, you know, distinctly much more of a hit than a miss. I would have liked to have seen, you know, a little bit tick better on the performance. I was export, uh, expecting the 14S to perform pretty much on par with the 12DX, but, you know, it was a tiny bit behind, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, that puts the 14S, you know, right as a solid performing $49 cooler. The 12LS, once again, $39 cooler, 75 millimeters tall, did absolutely everything you could expect it to. Uh, I think, you know, some people might expect, you know, well, it, you know, you couldn't run an overclock test with it on a Haswell. Well, no, but, you know, if you're expecting to be able to run, you know, a $39, 75mm call, uh, tall cooler, with an overclock, you know, your expectations are really a bit much. The other big thing here, um, I do want to point out, you know, the noise on both of them. DB doesn't tell everything. Very, very smooth sounding, great tonality, never abrasive at all. Right to top speed, the fans really sound great. You know, we've reviewed the uh, 140 HP fan in the past and found it to be a fantastic fan. And it performs really, really well and sounds great on here. The uh, 120 MP found on the 12 LS, same deal, very smooth throughout, great tonality. So they're really, like I say, compatibility is great, noise is great. Fantex really did what they set out to do. Now with that said, I'm going to give both pieces the High Tech Legion Gold Award. Very, very solid choices, right at the top of their classes. Not quite the pinnacle of their classes, but like I say, fabulous choices, solid performers, great compatibility, and fantastic noise.